Hello everyone, this is Michael from Blue Sky Bio. In this training tutorial, I will demonstrate our improved and streamlined process to design a tie-based crown taking advantage of our new AI automatic tooth design functionality. This functionality is available in Blue Sky Plan version 4.13 or newer. And what's great is that there are no fees involved for designing and exporting crowns from the Blue Sky Plan software. So you could design and export the STL file and or the XML configuration file for the milling machine, as many crowns as you like all day long, and there's no fee involved from Blue Sky Plan. So right before we get into the actual planning, I just want to point out that Blue Sky Bio actually gives out free crowns, including design and manufacturing for Blue Sky Bio customers. You could see information regarding this offer and other free offers, including surgical guides at blueskybio.digital forward slash free offers. So we're going to start the process by clicking on crown and bridge and then choosing crown for titanium base. Navigate to the location on your computer where you have the relevant files. We have the shortcut button going across the top for easy access. You can multi-select the relevant files by left clicking on the first one and seeing a sample and then hold down the shift key to multi-select several files. Once you've selected the relevant files, go ahead and click on OK. OK, we are now at the model alignment stage to properly align the models in space. Select the relevant draw for which you'll be designing the restoration. Select the draw type and select the model type. Click Continue to Alignment. Now we're going to be placing three dots to create a horizontal plane following the indications in the image in the top of the screen. So I'm going to hold down my shift key, place the first dot, place the second dot, and place the third dot. We now have the model aligned in space according to the grid to match the alignment of the head that we have in the bottom corner. Click the continue button. Now we are at the stage where you could fine tune the alignment. So if you want to move or rotate or pivot to the model in any direction, you could use the on-screen widget. We have the ability to show all models or just show the single model. And you could toggle on and off the grid as well as the widget. Once you've completed the model alignment, go ahead and click on Finish. We are now prompted with the next step to continue to scan body alignment. Before doing so, make sure to rotate the models and zoom in so that you could clearly see the scan body and the flat surface on the scan body and then click continue to scan by the alignment. The message that comes up on screen is confirming exactly what I just said to make sure that the scan body is visible and centered on the screen. Okay. Okay, we are now going to navigate to the correct scan body. So we have a list of companies here. You could choose the relevant company for the scan body you are going to be using. Of course, we encourage the use of the Blue Sky Bio scan bodies, and we even have the ability to use abutments as a scan body, so you're able to actually take advantage of this functionality. If you have an abutment and you have a scan with that abutment, you could align the library abutment to the digital abutment in the scan. In our case, we're going to select the Biomax NP scan body, and then click OK. And now we're going to left click once in the center of the flat part of the scan body. We see that the scan body alignment is now running and you are now prompted to select the relevant abutment and the relevant implant that was used in the case. Of course, you'll be able to switch the abutment if needed at a later point. Once you've selected the implant and abutment, click OK. Okay, we can now see that the scan body has been aligned to the scan body from the scan, and the abutment and the implant has been added as well. If we hide the implant and the abutment, and let's turn off our opposing arch, we could see the alignment of the scan body from the library to the scan body in the scan. At this point, we're going to add the AI design tooth simply by clicking the add tooth button. And here we have two options here, automatically create AI tooth, 
or select tooth from catalog. The option to select tooth from catalog is the option that we've always had that you could select a relevant tooth library and add the tooth from the tooth library. The new functionality is to automatically create an AI tooth based on the particular data set for your particular case. So we're going to indicate the missing tooth and then click the OK button. We are now going to single click in the area of the missing tooth. And we could see that the software has generated and placed a tooth for the case. So now that we've aligned the scan body and the tie base abutment, and we've generated the tooth design, we're going to click on continue to crown design. Now, the process of creating the crown is really just a few clicks at this point via the restoration design panel. But before we do that, let's just discuss if you do want to make modifications to the tooth. This is our first release of the automatic tooth design. If you run into any problematic cases, please send them to us so we could continue to improve and iterate using the machine learning artificial intelligence. This case itself has a bit of a problematic second molar here but if we do want to modify the tooth one of the easiest ways of doing it is just click on it you could change the transparency of the model itself and then you could just use the widget to resize in any direction so if you want to increase contacts a little bit here we could do that and if you want to change the width then really that's the simplest way to do that now we do have additional editing tools available via the teeth edit panel and I recommend playing around with those. So you could simply cl uh, click a particular tool and then use your left mouse button and your shift key to activate the tool. You're able to change the tool size and the tool strength that we have right here. So we have our smoothing tool that does exactly that. Hold down the shift key, use your left mouse button to smooth out. We have our global geometry transform, which as you could see, puts a matrix of dots on the tooth and you could just grab and drag and change the shape that way. We also have add remove material. So if you hold down shift and use your left mouse button, you'll be adding material. If you hold down control and use your left mouse button, you'll be removing material. We have local geometry transform with a small tool size you could affect a small part of the tooth. If you make that tool size significantly larger, then you could affect a large part of the tooth. So for example, I could toggle on the opposing arch. I could also use the closeness functionality for a red indication about contacts. And then I could use the editing tools, for example, to modify the tooth as needed. We also have here different Boolean operations, which we're not going to get into in this video, but you should know that they exist. Okay, so at this point, if I am happy with my tooth design, we are going to turn the tooth into our crown, and we'll do that via the restoration design panel. So the restoration type is crown on a tie base, the relevant jaw is the maxilla and we're going to confirm the selections here the model we're operating on is the maxilla the crown is the is the crown and the tie base is the tie base we could go ahead and select the antagonist as well i'm going to now click start and we're just going to go very quickly through the the short wizard process so we have our path of insertion which we can modify via the arrow or by aligning the model on screen and clicking set insertion direction from view. And then we go ahead and click on next. We could identify into proximal areas by holding down the shift key and the left mouse button, but this is only if we want to modify the shape of the crown. Since we have done that already and there's no need, simply confirm do not modify crown shape or placement is checked and then just click next. The margin curve can be drawn as needed. If you like to project and have it drawn automatically based on the placement of the tooth, 
click project margin and if you need to modify the shape or the placement at all hold down the shift key use your left mouse button to, and just draw where you like the margin curve to be once you have completed that go ahead and click on next And we are now at the point of designing the connection. The connection can be modified simply by grabbing and dragging any of the nodes here with your left mouse button or by using the sliders. Select the option if you would like to create a crown screw channel and then click on next. Okay, we can now see the crown, including the connection. At the final step here, we could once again use the design tools that we have and we could see the indication of any points of contacts. If we would like the software to automatically cut occlusal intersections or to adapt into proximal contacts, we could leave the checkboxes checked. Otherwise, if we have confirmed the crown design, simply uncheck the checkboxes and click next. Okay, we can now see our completed crown. Before we go to exports, let's just take a look at our surfaces. Let's toggle off the model. And here we see the crown designed for the tie base with the anti-rotation. On our surface list, the surface that appears with the D indicates that it is a design surface and here the design surface we have created the crown we could either go to file export or we could go back to our restoration design panel click the export button and here we could decide for our crown that we just designed do we want to export just the stl file or do we want to export the cam file the xml file for the milling machine as well select the relevant checkboxes click the export button to export the relevant files there is no fee currently for designing and exporting crowns in the blue sky plan software so you could go ahead and design as many crowns as you want and as many computers as you like export them as stls as xml files and there's no fee currently involved